When one thinks of New Zealand, one almost immediately thinks of its natural beauty and rich Maori traditions. Like most indigenous peoples, the Maori view the land as sacred, and many locations hold great spiritual significance for them. Heritage New Zealand recognizes over 180 wahi tapu, places sacred to Maori in the traditional, spiritual, religious, ritual, or mythological sense. While many sites are recognized by the local iwi, tribe, through this video, I hope to introduce you to seven sacred sites considered to be some of the holiest to all Maori people. The first sacred site, Lake Taupo, Te Moana Tuhertoa in Maori, is located in the North Island. In a previous video on the 12 gates of the world, I mentioned that Lake Taupo is Gate 11, Gate of Unity and represents the zodiac sign of Cancer. Associated with the Heart Chakra, visiting this site brings energies of harmony and peaceful social interactions into your energy field. There is also a belief that Lake Taupo is one of the four spinner wheels, each relating to one of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Specifically, Lake Taupo is the water wheel, which helps people gain access to their intuitive abilities and expands their capacity to feel and love. The largest lake by surface area in New Zealand, Lake Taupo was created nearly 25,000 years ago from a supervolcanic eruption. However, according to the Maori, it was the act of gods and goddesses that created the lake. One of these myths involved a priest demigod, Ngatoro Arangi, who saw a dust bowl empty of water when he first arrived in the area. He uprooted a Tatera tree and threw it. The wind caused him to miss, and the tree hit a hard bank and landed upside down so that the branches pierced the earth and caused fresh water to well up. Apparently, you can still see this tree under the water about 70 meters off the shore at Werewaka Point. The native fish inside the lake are strands from the cloak of Ngatoro Irangi, which he threw into the water after giving thanks for the water. Another legend tells of the god Tain and his wife Hainui Tiipa, goddess of death and the underworld. When his wife left him, Tain cried so much that his tears formed the lake. He then filled the lake with all the treasures of the world to commemorate his beloved wife. Whichever legend you choose to believe, Lake Taupo is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. Mototeko Island in Lake Taupo is a sacred burial ground for the ancestors and chiefs of the Ngadi Tuhertoa tribe. At the southernmost point of Lake Taupo, the enigmatic Kamanawa Wall is located. Archaeologists and scholars are still debating whether it is a man-made structure or natural formation. If it is man-made, it could be a step pyramid similar to those found on other South Pacific islands. Unfortunately, until the forest is cleared, and a thorough excavation is conducted, it remains a mystery. From Lake Taupo, Mount Cook can be seen in the distance, and it is the second sacred site that I will discuss. Mount Cook, also known as Airaki, stands at 3,724 meters, 12,218 feet, making it the highest mountain in New Zealand. Naitahu, the main iwi of the South Island, regard Airaki as their most revered ancestor. According to Maori legend, Airaki and his three brothers were sailing on a canoe, exploring the Earth Mother, when their vessel became stranded on a reef. The south wind was so frigid that all four of them froze. The traditional name for the South Island is Te Waka o Airaki, which means, the canoe of Airaki. The prows of the canoe transformed into the Marlborough Sounds, while his brothers became the Katira Tairai o Te Moana, the Southern Alps. At the top of the North Island, there is a stretch of beach where spirits gather to depart this world. Cape Reina, or Te Rarenga Wairua in Maori, is known as, the leaping place of spirits. Here, as well as in the nearby Spirits Bay, or Kapa Wairua in Maori, are the mythical gateways to the other world. The spirits of the newly departed chanted the name of the goddess of death and darkness, Hainui Tiipa, as they made their way to the promontory near the northernmost point of the cape, slid into the water, and swam over to Three Kings Island. From Cape Reina, one can witness this profound spiritual event by observing the clashing and merging of the ocean currents at a distinctive line that marks the intersection of the Tasman Sea and the Pacific Ocean. From this spot, they made their final ascent with the westerly setting sun to Hawaii, their ancestral homeland and heaven. In the East Cape region of the North Island, Mount Hikurangi is considered the place where the first light of day touches New Zealand. To Ngadi Poru, this mountain is their ancestral home, and they celebrate it annually through their Hikurangi festival. One of the most fascinating myths linked to Mount Hikurangi is the tale of Ngadi Poru's ancestor, Haikia, and his younger half-brother, Ruatapu. In their ancestral homeland of Hawaii, Ruatapu plotted to kill his brothers at sea for his father's insult of him as the son of a slave. All his siblings perished, and Paikia was only saved because he appealed for aid from the sea gods and ancestors. Paikia sailed to New Zealand on the back of a whale, but Ruatapu pursued him relentlessly, sending a great flood after him. Mount Hikurangi became a safe haven for him. Another legend recounts how Maui, another of their ancestors, fished up a giant fish that would become the North Island from the ocean. On the west coast of the North Island stands Mount Taranaki, which means, gliding peak, in Maori. Taranaki and the other volcanoes of New Zealand used to be located in the center of the North Island. 
all the mountains fought fiercely for the magnificent Pihenga, which was desired by all of them. The battle was ultimately won by Tongariro, who severely wounded Taranaki's side and forced him to flee. Following Teitoka Rahodu, the Rock of Rahodu, Taranaki moved west, carving out the deep gorges of the Huanganui River. It then paused for a while, creating the depression that became the Tengger Swamp, before turning north. The Puakai Ranges prevented Taranaki from moving forward, and as the sun rose, he became petrified in his current position. If you see Taranaki concealed by rainclouds, he is crying for his lost love. If you see stunning sunsets over the peak, it is because Taranaki still hopes to win her back. But Tongariro is always ready to erupt as a warning for Taranaki never to return. The sixth sacred site is the Huanganui River, Te Awa Tupua, which translates to, the river personified as a sacred being. It is the longest navigable river in New Zealand and was revered for sharing its life force with the people who lived along its banks for generations. As mentioned before, the Huanganui River was created by Mount Taranaki when it was escaping from Tongariro. Another Maori legend states that when Maui brought the North Island out of the ocean, he prayed for two tear drops to land on the fish, and these two drops became the rivers Huanganui and Waikato. The name Huanganui comes from an ancestor who was believed to have traveled down the river on a raft created from the bark of a tree. The seventh sacred site is Waipua Forest, home to three-quarters of New Zealand's Kauri trees. Just a short walk from the road, you can find Tain Mahuta, the largest known Kauri tree in the world, standing at 51 meters high and with a girth of 13.8 meters. As mentioned earlier in the video, Tain is the husband of Hainui Tiipa, the goddess of death and the underworld. Being a major god of Maori tradition, Tain is associated with the forest and all living things in it. Tain Mahuta is considered the physical manifestation of this god. In one Maori creation story, Tain Mahuta pushed his parents, the earth and sky, apart by lying between them to create room for him and his siblings to exist. Another notable Kauri tree in Waipua is Te Machua Nahir, the largest in girth and the second largest by volume, estimated to be from 2000 to 3000 years old. Walking in the footsteps of the Maori at these seven sacred sites allows us to connect with the land, feel its spiritual energies, and more deeply understand the culture of the Maori people. Let me know in the comments below if you have been to any of these sites and what your experience was like.